is focused on, uh, GBA is focused on uh, uh, coming up with concepts that uh, governments will be able to adopt, right? Uh, as sort of what the future of, uh, what the future looks like in terms of governance and best practices around governance as well. Uh, our goal today uh, in regards to some of the work that's been, been, been established by the GBA uh, and that we've been doing around the world is, is really more focused on, on getting these, uh, it has, has for the last two and a half years that we've been doing these monthly, uh, a series of monthly talks in Miami, usually about a different theme that talks about applications and use cases for, uh, for blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, as it relates to uh, real world applications and not necessarily with any association uh, as, it, as it pertains to crypto. Uh, so a part of what, we, what our mission has been is really just trying to make sure that, that the lexicon that we're using and the words that we choose to use, make sure that people are aware that, 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 that crypto relies on blockchain for the most part, but blockchain is not necessarily crypto. And so we do have a lot of uh, crypto organizations in Miami that are very active and, and, and also uh, very educational uh, that we're collaborating with. But for the point of today's conversation, this is exactly one of the, one of the ultimate use cases, I would say, of, of blockchain technology and the spirit of blockchain technology, which is decentralization and being able to put hands back into the hands of the people. Uh, so to that effect, uh, today we want to cover one of the excited, one of the projects that the Government Blockchain Association has been working on and developing um, uh, and that is quite advanced on, and that is the Government Blockchain Association, a, 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 a decentralized autonomous organization, right? And so this, 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 this GBA DAO, uh, uh, in this case, we're calling it the GAO, is indicative more for the most part of, of how we see uh, the future of these new models, new models and paradigms perhaps being used by governments one day. Uh, so the GBA, just for reference, is um, uh, we have the uh, founder of the GBA, Gerard Dache, of GBA Global um, uh, on our call today. Uh, luckily for us, and 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 and, and it's uh, GBA is based out of Fairfax, Virginia. I have more than a hundred chapters around the world, uh, uh, close to three years or more now. That's that that we've been working together with and educating with and educating the public sector and the government um, around around this the use case and the applications of this technology, and moreover, is understanding uh, uh, how we can take it from just something theoretical and cool to real world application. So. Because the GBA is a global organization, because we have, you know, that means that we have uh, uh, country uh, decision makers. Then, you know, in the case of, of, of Florida, more recently, we created a, a, a statewide last year, uh, statewide GBA a, a focus, and then as well, you have your, your chapter level, which is uh, on, on a city level, which tend to be these uh, examples of uh, just like a municipal government. So, so the GAO and the evolution of the GAO as a new governance model. Uh, using blockchain technology to, to establish and maintain these governance models and organizations on what's called the rules-based system, right? So we agreed to a system and how it's going to work. And now you set it and you forget it and it should work for the most part. You update it collectively. And this should theoretically reduce fraud, corruption, and injustice. Topics that have been uh, on the front of many people's minds quite for some time. So to this effect, um, uh, the, the, I, I want to just mention generally what decentralized, uh, the, 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 the goal of today's meeting will be, what are decentralized autonomous organizations, right? And how can a decentralized autonomous organization affect our current reality? How could it be relevant to anybody that's joining you, us today, whether you're a public, somebody on the public side or whether you're somebody on the private side um, or whether you're a nonprofit organization even, right? How, how this could pertain to you. And so um, without further ado, I'll go ahead and kick off our presentation to, um, uh, on a share screen. All right. And present. Now this is Zoom here. How do I do this? Uh, do you, there should be a share screen button at the bottom. 
front and center. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Let me go to. Is the meeting still open to join? My buddy's trying to join. It should be. It is. Okay. okay. I'll tell him. Okay. Here we are. So, um, so yeah, here's GBA. Uh, we're going to be talking about decentralized autonomous organizations today. And, um, and without further ado, let's get started. So uh, the DAO is not necessarily a new concept. There was one that was launched before and, 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 um, uh, and so in 2016, uh, mainly Ethereum based. And uh, I have a couple of other, we have actually a number of uh, blockchain and DAO experts on today's uh, call. So if you guys want to jump in and mention anything uh, that pertains to the DAO, that'd be great. I think maybe for the sake of understanding our, uh, our audience, I'd suggest uh, if we can sort of go around and, and introduce ourselves uh, uh, just to, uh, to get us a feel for the audience and, uh, and who we have present. Ladies first. Uh, and if possible, well, let's uh, go ahead and actually start with our co-host, Melissa, with Venture Cafe, to mention to you guys that are, not, uh, that are, that are, that are uh, dialing in from outside Miami a little bit about Venture Cafe, which has been a, a, part, a partner and a very important part of our success in Miami uh, over the last three years. Melissa? Yes, thank you, Silvio. Um, my name is Melissa Pierre Kelly. I work with Venture Cafe and we do a number of things. Um, and the, I guess, the, our signature events is a Thursday gathering event that we have brought online now to what we call VCM Virtual. And it's really just about bringing innovators together to um, one central platform um, to be able to meet each other, make connections, partnerships, you never know when uh, those collisions will turn into various opportunities. So um, it's meant to be a way to learn, engage, share with each other, um, different resources, uh, tools, um, anything that can come our way to be better the ecosystem. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing this back in person because the event itself is just very, you know, a very positive atmosphere, very, um, great energy um, that we had in person where we would bring together upwards of 300 to 400 people together on a weekly basis. So one of the biggest networking events um, for entrepreneurship, innovation, um, uh, a lot of different uh, creatives will come together um, and it would just be um, just a great um, showcase of, uh, you know, amazing things and amazing, amazing initiatives that people are doing. Not only in Miami, but South Florida, um, people will come from Broward and Palm Beach sometimes. So um, we're really happy to be able to bring organizations like um, GBA, um, Logos here, a, a number, they come a lot, and a number of other organizations that come pretty regularly. So if you would like to uh, take part in hosting a session, um, I will put in some information in the chat. Uh, to do so, to get connected, um, but we really just love people participating and making this community better because it's all about, you know, what you put into it is what you get out. Um, so it's really about um, encouraging everyone's participation and um, being a, a part of making, um, you know, Venture Cafe and also just the, the innovation environment as a whole just, um, you know, work better cohesively. Um, so I welcome all of you here and we're here every week um, from 4 to 8 p.m. So stop in again and you can um, take in a different session, um, interactive discussion, and also check out the Remo area. And that's like basically our networking that we've brought online. You get to sit at tables almost like the real life and um, meet people there. So this can help you um, add to you know, your usual day during the pandemic, maybe try something a little bit different. But well, thanks for coming. All right. Should I tag someone else? Yeah. I will tag um, Alejandro. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Alejandro Klimberg, and I'm uh, currently a student at New York University, but I uh, was born and raised in Miami. Um, I'm very interested in uh, the fintech industry and especially into blockchain. Um, and I look forward to hearing um, the presentation. Thank you, Alejandro. Alejandro, put, put, uh, help us put together a, uh, uh, um, uh, a good part of today's presentation. So we appreciate your support on that, Alejandro. Um, Marin? Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Marin. I am with Logos Capital, and I am delighted to be calling in from New York. I work with family offices and also several venture philanthropy communities, and I'm delighted to be here to learn more about the real world applications of blockchain in order to elevate our current systems and where can we participate along, along the line in terms of funding partnerships and implementation. So I really appreciate the presentation. I look forward to it. And Silvio, always wonderful. Thank you for the invitation and for bringing us all in. And Melissa, thank you for beautiful hosting. Really appreciate it. Delighted to be with you all. All right. Thank you for that. Um, and um, Marin, who, could you tag somebody next? Usually we go. Usually we go clockwise around the room and around the table. Uh, <laughs> so it's a it's a little harder today. Seeing um, uh, Praveen. Seeing you. Malachi. <laughs> Are you there, Praveen? Maybe maybe. We uh, can also uh, go perhaps perhaps. Jean Claude. Uh, you're supposed to do that to somebody you don't know. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I was just so excited but, to be from you. I was like, you're here, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, in any case, I'm Jean Claude and I'm with Melissa, uh, Marin, and Silvio. Oh, and I forgot Alexander, Alejandro. All right. And also, I did help Silvio start this about, uh, what is it, two and a half years ago now, three years? Yep. So, and I hope we're going to have a vote soon to be replaced. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Jean-Claude is the official vice president of the Government Blockchain Association here uh, locally and uh, make sure that we... Well, you, sh you, should, you, you shouldn't say that with, uh, uh, with uh, our president. Uh, uh, on the phone with Gerard because I found out after you made me vice president, Gerard, that's his fault, that if we don't have a certain number of members, we don't have vice presidents. But anyway, I'm here anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, thanks for that. I see we have Anna and Christy. Anna? Christy? All right, you're on mute, by the way. There you go. Hi, girl. How are you? Hey, Christy. I'm new to blockchain. Uh, I just Hello. started doing some research on it uh, because, you know, of COVID, and I'm intrigued. Um, I just started a, a consulting business, so I'm just checking. I just want to see if I can apply um, any, you know, anything to blockchain to my business services. So that's why I'm here to learn. All right. Awesome. Good. Welcome. I think I heard my name as well. I wasn't yeah. sure. Hey, yes. So yeah. Hi. Hi. Glad to be here. I'm Anna Ginsberg. I run the blockchain center in New York. And we also have a blockchain center in Miami. And it's also the Bitcoin center in New York and Bitcoin center Miami. Yeah. Uh, basically have like, um, you know, events and virtual panels and we have a blockchain center youtube channel and we have regular shows like trading tuesday and there's one tonight about enterprise blockchain at 7 p.m and we have the telegram group so if you'd like to connect with the blockchain center on telegram 
I posted the link. And basically, you know, we try to educate as much as possible on the new blockchain technologies and the different decentralized platforms. And we also work with large companies to help build technology and to facilitate community building and, you know, everything that you would expect from Blockchain Center. So, and now we're actually, um, I'm thinking of opening up maybe in a few weeks, the new location on Broadway and 82nd Street. We have uh, close to 10,000 square feet. Um, oh, so, wow. So that's going to be, you know, nice, but. Um, yes, yes, we're working very, very, very closely with you guys here in Miami. I don't think we've had a chance to meet. Yes, uh, so you know, Erica and Scott, right? That's right, and Nick, Mr. Spanos. Yes. Nick Spanos, yes, perfect. Great, yep. thank you for being with us. Scott Anna. and Nick are actually in New York at the New York Bitcoin Center. We're having a very, very small private just meeting. Okay. I guess you could say okay. later on, but. I'll tell them you said hello and yes, please join us and reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm enjoy you know, looking forward to see yeah. what you guys Yes, have. yes. So we always we always need to have one of your well, somebody from the team uh, on board. So I'm happy that 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 you're able to join us. Um Victoria. You're on mute. So we have Victoria, Praveen. Um, I don't know if Praveen, you you heard uh, if you heard us while while we were around. I'll jump uh, into Augusto. Lara Augusto is uh, been is one of the people that is helping with the government with the GBA uh, decentralized autonomous organization uh, uh, project and and working with DAOs in general. Augusto, are you there? I think he's calling in from Mexico. Hey guys. Um, so yeah, I have a, a development company focused on analytics in Mexico. And we started a team that does a uh, blockchain a few, well, two years ago. And we are uh, you now working with the GBA, just building the, the um, with, a, with another team of developers and designers, building the first uh, DAO for the GBA. And it's great to be here. And thanks for organizing this, Silvio. All right. Awesome. Yes. Get the, you're trying to get the word out. Um, and um, I see we have a couple of other people from our team that have joined in the conversation. Uh, I'm trying to pull up my uh, Zoom thing here. Anyone, any other volunteers on to introduce yourself next? I'll go next. Hi, um, my name is uh, Mama Shanawaz. I am the president of uh, GBA UAE. And uh, we started back in uh, February 2020. Uh, we had a lot of webinars uh, not going on after lockdown. Uh, um, we also presented so many uh, startups in UAE recently. Uh, recently, we had last webinar, we had Spot Stoner, who's a founding father of blockchain, present. Uh, we're going to have in July one of the largest uh, webinars. We're going to have, like, we're planning to have. A webinar on DAOs. So we're going to have people from Blockchain Research Institute, Arabon, and uh, also from GBA present DAOs. Um, so yeah, so this is a big brief introduction. Thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you for joining us all the way from the UAE. Uh, definitely would love to. Uh, please keep it posted on that. If you can make a post on our meetup page or something others that that they can let us understand what you're working on, that'd be great. Um, uh, we'd love to, to help support that and promote what you're doing over there. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, quite diverse call. Um, let's see, we also have Nicholas. Nicholas, you want to make a quick intro? Then uh, we can go to Wyatt, start a circle yeah. back with Praveen and, 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 and Jacques. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, Nicholas Thurston, a uh, recent graduate from the University of Florida. So, go Gators, baby. Go Gators. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, graduating business. Um, why I'm interested in blockchain government, um, I want to go to law school. I see the application of this for government potential, overhauling a lot of basically everything, to be honest. I, could, I, I know what you guys are trying to work on. I could see all what you're trying to do, Silvio, and I would love to get more involved, get more information about it. Um, yeah, I'll be applying this fall for law school, so hopefully next year, getting somewhere pretty, pretty good. But, yep. All right. All right, Got good. It. 
Yeah, from Miami as well. So born and raised, 305. All right. Nice. <laughs> Another Miamian. All right. Good, good. Thanks for joining us, Nick, and, and appreciate the support. Uh, I would love to have you involved on as we roll this out. Wyatt? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Wyatt Willis. I'm, uh, I'm from the University of Florida. just graduated. Like Nick, Nick's actually the one that invited me to this, and I'm very happy he did. I got interested in, uh, in blockchain and cryptocurrency in general in college. I'm not an expert. Don't claim to be. I want to learn a lot more. I'm very adamant about basic attention token, like I was talking about earlier, just because I'm from the advertising world. And the fact that a, a website, a search engine, will pay you to watch advertisements that are targeted to you is revolutionary, in my opinion. And I, I honestly would like everybody to go and check it out if they haven't already. I really do think it's got a good use case. And who doesn't want to get paid for watching ads? I mean, bottom line, it's so boring. Every time an ad comes up on YouTube, you just go and skip it, even if it's targeted to you. But if you're a paid. Right, right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely on point. Um, uh, you're cutting out. You're cutting out there. I'm just leave the gym so I can start to this. Actually, uh, I, I'd love to get on many people in this case and what future meetings are. Well, uh, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, Wyatt. Uh, you're, you're just cutting in and out. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, Mark, can you hear me clearly now? Better. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm happy to be here and I want to perform the whole future. Okay, all right. Well. All right, cool. You can go to the next person. Okay. Um, uh, J Jonathan IABA. You're good. This is what. It's Jonathan IABA. You there? Uh, Jacques, you want to give a quick intro on yourself? Uh, sorry. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Jacques Bekondu, and. Uh, normally, I'm a, I'm a blockchain developer, and uh, I do a, a blockchain uh, program strategies at uh, Logos Capital, and uh, at the same time, I'm involved in the uh, uh, technical solutions and uh, standards for the uh, uh, COVID-19 and uh, also uh, standards and uh, blockchain governance uh, for uh, the, R the IEEE, -E, which is a national organization of, for uh, standards. Uh, that's pretty much uh, my roles at the, at the moment. I appreciate being here with everyone. Thank you, Jacques. Okay. Yeah, here. Yeah, are you with us? And then, um, and then we'll uh, go to Victoria and uh, bring it home with Gerard. Yes, sir. Hi, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll go next. Hey, yeah, you How you doing? Good. Thank you for joining us. You want to introduce yourself to to the group? 
No problem, of course. So my name is Yair Sonnenschein. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I've been living in the U.S. for the past six years. And now I live, currently live in Miami, Florida, but I attend the Coast School of Business in Indiana. Okay. And um, how do you get exposed to blockchain? I was exposed to blockchain actually by you, uh, by our first conversations when we started talking over the phone and got into Logos Capital. It was a very interesting idea that you that you proposed about how the future is going to be operating with uh, this blockchain activity. And it seems very interesting to learn about. All right. Yep. Yep. And here we are. We're, we're, we're living it. We're living it. Okay. Well, yes, I think that, um, uh, that's super helpful. Thank you. And no Victoria? Problem. Hi. So I'm originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I moved to New York City for college. I went to NYU and just recently graduated. I studied international business with a concentration on sustainable development. So I guess what first uh, attracted, like draw, uh, what draws me to Logos Capital is this um, impact investing primarily, but I've also just been recently exposed to blockchain and look forward to learning more about it. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for that. Good. I think that uh, let's bring it home with uh, with none other than Gerard Dache. Wow. Well, well, I feel like that's a lot of pressure. Uh, my name is Gerard Dache. I'm the executive director of the Government Blockchain Association. And uh, I guess my introduction to, to this whole subject was uh, my son bought $2.86 worth of Bitcoin. And when he sold him, he paid for, um, uh, let's see, a motorcycle, a car, his college expenses, and his living expenses. So it kind of got my attention. Um, we found out that blockchain was the secret sauce, and we started a, a little meetup in D.C. And not too long after that, um, uh, Silvio came on board. And, uh, you know, once Silvio came on board, the thing just exploded. So if, if you know him, uh, he's had great uh, influence on, uh, on GBA, uh, not just there in Miami, but, but all over the world. So uh, super excited to be here. And, uh, and I know that the whole the Dow governance team and the Miami team were just uh, uh, phenomenal. And uh, can't wait to hear uh, what they have to say. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pay uh, Gerard to say that, by the way, guys. Uh, um, but thank you, Gerard. Very nice of you. Uh, good. All right. So let me just go back to the share screen here. And uh, now that we have a little bit of a feel for our audience, and how do we go into the share screen mode? Yeah. Bear with me. And I found it. And advanced sharing. Okay, wow. Here we go. All right. So, um, what is a DAO? Let's jump straight into it. 2016 was the first time that a DAO got made. And this idea was based on this, on, the, on this thing of, okay, let's try to decentralize even something that a financial transaction can do. Um, so it's done. So during this four week, the DAO was, uh, was, was, uh, was, was launched. They started issuing, uh, issuing to DAO tokens in exchange for Ether. Um, and they raised about 150 million US dollars. 150 million, right? And this really starts to create what, the, what is now considered to be the, the, the you know, in the same of, of, of fundraising and the application of why the DAO was made of decentralized finance or DeFi as it's most commonly known. But there are two main issues on why the first DAO uh, changed. And one of them is really just software, right? There was a vulnerability issue in the, in the program that, uh, uh, that allowed hackers to get into the into the DAO, and um, and and they took the fund, basically fit, figured out a way to rig the system, and they took about a third of all the funds uh, out of the DAO. Uh, so big big ouch um, uh, in terms of the vulnerability points. And the other thing was that you know it didn't account for for um, for the vulnerabilities that are usually uh, associated to and the protections that are usually afforded by 
things like joint stock companies, right? You're some of the first uh, companies that would work on um, more than anything, just, you know, the, the first legal company or legal entity or third party entity. Uh, and moreover, uh, there was another thing that's more specific to the US is that because they were selling these, these security tokens, um, you needed to be, to be a, 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 a what's called a, um, an authorized buyer or a qualified purchaser uh, for the securities. Uh, in this case, what would be considered a security, right? So they were sell, you know, people were able to buy these things that, that according to, to, to rules and regulations at the time, maybe shouldn't have had access to this, kinds of, uh, this kind of thing as an investment or an asset class or anything that has to do with the DAO. So that created a number of vulnerability points, um, both not just from, from the exposure on the capital side, uh, but moreover, just on the legal and the compliance issues. Yeah, if you're more interested on that, I can I'll tell you a little more about that. So, but what is it? Okay, I mean, the first one was launched. That's great. That's fine and dandy. But why does it matter? And what's so important about it? Uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, um, is what this, uh, we're referring to as a DAO, is um, uh, by, uh, by its first instance is decentralized. So there's no centralized legal entity, right? Everyone and multiple players can be a, a as you see in this slide, um, a verifier or a validator in the system, right? And it's also something that is autonomous. It can only be autonomous because of this self-enforcing code, right? This idea of uh, we figure this out. We, once we, we understand our rules of governance, then we can agree that this is how we want to be ruled or how we want to rule ourselves or what we want to at least start with. And that gives you this autonomy and the way that decisions are made are really done by these smart contracts. Smart contracts are really just program, program decisions. Um, uh, but they could also be your traditional legal contract where you look at bylaws, just as we will look at later today, and you say, okay, well, if these are the bylaws and the ways that we agree as an organization to make decisions, how can we agree to make decisions using these bylaws and, and agree that, that and, and sort of every time we just come, we vote, and, and according to the minimum requirements, we, may, we, throw, we pass in our ballot and decisions are made. And these things are really run by tokens or exchanges or validators. That's one a way of architecture um, uh, that, that's possible. Uh, so uh, today, you know, I think one thing that we will notice is we're talking about a particularly not just the concept of the decentralized autonomous organization, but that the government uh, blockchain association is going ahead and doing their own uh, 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 government blockchain association, decentralized autonomous organization called GAO, which we'll get into. But in this case, one of the fundamental areas and one of the pillars and cornerstones of the decentralized autonomous organization is this thing called the distributed ledger technology. And distributed ledger technology is meant to, um, to talk about, you know, how do you record transfers between digital assets and, and people? Uh, so you have, you keep, you keep a, a record and, and that it's in a way that can't really be manipulated because you synchronize a copy of all the, of all the records that are shown in the system and everybody keeps a copy of the records in the system. So it's not like I can change something on my end and then hide it and hide it from Gerard, let's say over there in Washington, DC or hide, or hide it from our friends over at the UAE. No, if I make a change on my contract, his document updates automatically and our other counterparties documents update automatically. And that's kind of one of the beauties and one of the cornerstones of, of what makes this disruptive is because multiple parties um, uh, are able to keep records of these logs and, and hence a distributed nature of it. And all of these, uh, the third cornerstone just of blockchain in general is that these things and these ledgers and logs are cryptographic, right? And what does that mean? You know, it's just the way that they are stored and saved uh, uh, it is, uses advanced mathematics and encryption to be able to, uh, uh, to work. So <coughs> traditional systems are these centralized ledgers, right? Usually this would work. And this is the idea of a, dis a distributed um, uh, system. All right. So how does it work? Um, you don't need uh, one central authority. It's, in this case, all the transactions happen uh, through this consensus protocol, which is how everybody agrees to agree, right? And the agreement there means that each one of these users needs to understand how they play a part. I'm, you know, are you going to create a permission or unpermission system? We can get into that if you're if you're interested in learning more about blockchain basics of what permission and 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 uh, non-permission based systems uh, look like. 
we, we do cover that um, during our GBA uh, uh, fundamentals course. And how mature is this technology? Uh, well, distributed ledger technology has been around over a decade now, first published by uh, Satoshi Nakamoto on a white paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, uh, which is the first theoretical framework for the distributed ledger technology. Um, to, this, to this effect, right, the peer-to-peer -peer and the reason that they came up with blockchain was so like that people can't just copy and paste and abuse the system, right? Once you put something on the record and you made a transference of, of a payment or a system, it's irrefutable, it stays on the record forever. So people can't continue sort of copy and pasting money around uh, and they're able to, and that's really what, what, what one, of the, one of the conundrums needed to, to be solved was in order to adopt digital money. Now, who's the Government Blockchain Association? Um, uh, I'd actually like to give you a, a, a short presentation on, on the GBA, um, but we have, we have uh, uh, Gerard Dache uh, here, which is one of the uh, founders of the GBA. Uh, and this was, as you heard, right, it was started as a local meetup to talk about the technology and the use cases of technology. And for those that you might not, might not be familiar with Gerard's background, Gerard was in charge of auditing uh, different situations, different companies that, that were providing uh, a very important supply chain or decision-making systems on the technology side. Uh, so very, very, you know, very active with government suppliers and government entities on that, on that front, um, uh, bes besides also being a veteran uh, that served. And so the idea here is that we can take this, the things that, that GBA has been working on, really GBA being a thought leader in blockchain with the idea of developing these new models and paradigms for governments to use one day. So us launching something like the GAO, a lot of people think that these things are very theoretical. Um, you know, in theory, yes, uh, uh, this rule-based system of a decentralized autonomous organization is a governance model, which is rule-based. So, you know, the rules that are established produce nepotism and fraud and corruption and injustice as it might be, because there's a, there's a fair way to play by the rules of the game and the rules of the game are what they are. Now, a lot of people are like, well, is this, how, how feasible is this and how real is it? And that's where the leadership of the GBA comes into place. And it's important for us to to think about maybe how the GAO works as our first example. For example, uh, like most organizations, the Government Blockchain Association has its bylaws. And you know, most other companies you will find, or corporations in general, also have bylaws. And these bylaws, for example, say how it is that decisions are made at an organizational level, whether it's a corporation, a benefit corporation, a nonprofit organization, a municipality, um, or even you know, a homeowners association. Everyone needs to agree to how they're going to set these systems up and make the decisions. GBA is no exception. GBA's model is really that the decisions are made based on the members of the organization and the requests of the members of the organization uh, to shape the future of the organization. As a result of that, like most organizations, GBA is led day to day by operational staff, like the CEO, the COO, the CFO, Etc., and that the, the management, right, in this case the operations staff, uh, reports to the board of directors, right? And so, in this case, um, uh, the GBA working group, and we have many working groups that specialize in everything from crypto mining to energy, land titling, education, special interests, um, supply chain, you know, and uh, you know, the, the list really goes on uh, uh, in terms of all the specialized working groups. Actually, one of the greatest assets that we have as an organization is no matter what chapter ge geographically you belong to, the, your, your, whatever compels you or draws you into blockchain technology or whatever you see applications of blockchain technology being or going into, you know, say law or, or, or banking, it, it, there's a working group for you. So I'd really encourage you to take a look at that. Um, and the GBA uh, DAO is no exception. This working group has been set up a couple of the members that are here today uh, are very, have been very instrumental in part of uh, in part of that. And we are actually expecting to get together uh, next month, right, uh, to uh, to launch the GAO, the GBA Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And uh, so we're in the middle of that and looking at improving how we can make decisions to make this a proof of concept uh, and go past that proof of concept as a, as our own nonprofit organization to see how others can do it from the GBA working groups, the GBA chapters, GBA national, et cetera, uh, and, the pre and the principles both at a regional, global, and local level. And so 
the governance in this case, like most bylaws, you'd have the management team report to the board and then the board reports uh, to what are called the electors, okay? And these electors, um, you know, a, a, are the ones that ultimately, on behalf of the rest of the users organization, we'll get into this in the next, in the next couple slides, a, are chosen to then pick the people on the board and the board then makes the decisions on the operators. So uh, it's very interesting how that comes full circle. Uh, and, um, and, and so some of the people that are behind this, uh, Max Gravit, for example, uh, has been one of the people that are very instrumental uh, in getting this done. Uh, but the, really the, the entire decentralized autonomous organization, along with Max, the CTO of the GBA, uh, working on the GBA token, team that's working on the GBA token has also been very instrumental. The group that, that heads up Telos, Telos has also been very instrumental. Uh, the, the Washington, Seattle uh, GBA team has, in California team has been very instrumental. So again, this is all really a unified effort to try to get this out where it needs to be for a global community. Um, and the GBA tokens are part of that, right? How do we make these decisions and how do we distribute those decisions? Um, uh, the GBA token has been a part of uh, understanding and, and, and dealing with the working. So operationally, how are things, how are value or decisions exchanged based on these tokens? And each one of these electors is gonna be given a GBA token. So for example, the GBA DAO, the GAO members, um, are, are, are given this opportunity. And then after a different number of months, they can, you know, people that submit proposals uh, uh, to the GBA, uh, the, the people that make the GAO are able to, 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 to basically use these delega this delegated authority, just like we have in the delegation here of, amongst existing uh, government systems, is to be able to, um, to go ahead and mint that. And representation is, in this case, designed a, according to the growth of the organization, depending on how many people are coming up right, and, 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 and how many people are members of each local chapter. So if GBA Miami, for example, has a very large number of members, uh, we would have accordingly a representation that is commensurate to uh, the kind, the amount of, 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 of members that care about the organization that are involved with our organization, right? Um, here's an example of Telos and how Telos works. Let me know if you're able to, are you, if you're still well, able to see my screen. Speed, scalability and mutability. Oh. You guys see my screen here on the YouTube? Um, I, I can't see the screen either for whatever reason. I don't know if anybody else has that issue, but. Right. I, I can't see it. You see it. You see it? Yes, I do see it. Okay. The government model where token holders and block producers make the off-chain decisions while smart contracts execute the on-chain actions. DPs are also attributed to other governance functions such as implementing additional governance rules and validating transactions through a delegated proof of stake consensus algorithm. Hey Silvio, you need to uh, share the computer audio. So it's under, uh, on your control, on your controls down to the bottom of the screen. Uh, I, think, I think under where it says more, one of those options is to control computer audio. Or, uh, You're muted, Silvio. Okay. Um, is this, is, 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 let me know if this works. I mean, or is there something else here that you guys can guide me here that, need, that I need to click on to share the audio? Try it again. Yeah, we, we cannot hear the audio. Okay. All right, so then maybe I could, um, maybe I'll relay here what, uh, what the- oh, right there it is. Can you hear it? I think we're hearing it through your speaker. Additionally, 
Telos also has an arbitration system that offers two controllers a dispute resolution platform. Lock producers and arbitrators are selected by the token holders through an on-chain voting platform developed by Telos, the trial voting system. All the governance features of Telos are awesome. All right, I'll take a pause. Are you able to hear it well? Or if not, I can redo a re 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 share. It's okay, it's okay. We got it. We got it. All of these documents and features. It's okay? Yes. Implemented since Telos launched, the goal has been to establish a secure, stable, and governable blockchain where every token holder, developer, and business can trust. Right. So, um, that should give you guys a little bit of an idea of um, of uh, what we're doing on the um, and I did the presentation uh, um, of of how this is of how this comes together and how this works together uh, for um, for the DAO. Okay, let me just go back into sharing my presentation with you. Um, bear with me. Okay. Sure, sure. To share your computer audio, please install the audio device. All right, you hear me well? Can you guys see my screen? Yep, yep. All right. So this gives you an idea a little bit about Telos. If you guys are interested in this, that um, um, this whole this whole pro uh, a lot of this project is being looked at. Uh, Telos is, is is a good framework that's been proven. Uh, depending on what you're doing and, and and some concerns and things that you should be aware of is. What are the legalities and where can you actually incorporate a, a DAO? And some, some states that, are, that you might want to look into are Wyoming, for example, and Delaware. Uh, we ourselves, um, uh, I registered a number of, uh, of my companies in Wyoming uh, because of the laws that are there. And so you might want to understand that, that the DAO is either its own group uh, or its own company. Uh, but it, they're also maybe registering in places that have what are called sandboxes, right? And these legal sandboxes allow you to experiment with new things, especially when you're using financial technologies in a way that could be uh, helpful. Uh, and going further on this side of, of, of jurisdiction, uh, there's also this idea of maybe just being able to set up your DAO as a limited liability company, right? And this is, there's one such project is the Lao uh, that was launched by, um, by Open Law. Uh, so uh, essentially what you do is you have, um, in the case of the Lao, for example, uh, you have the, the a Delaware limited liability company managed by the, uh, uh, which is, which only will raise money, for example, from accredited investors. So they're not running a file. This is the second iteration of a group that's trying to do, uh, the, the, the Dow again, in a way that meets and complies ex under existing legal structures that weren't around the first time that the DAO was made. Uh, both from a cybersecurity perspective, people were more careful about launching it, uh, as well as from a compliance perspective to make sure they were running around, uh, running, a, running afoul of the law. Now, the idea with, the, the, with this Lao uh, uh, that we were able to, uh, uh, to be with from, 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 from their early days of, 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 of pre-launch and seeing how it worked out, was that it limited the participation of the members to be uh, investors only. And the reason is that the Lao was set up as a way to become a venture funding vehicle. Uh, so people would be able to submit their deals and then you would invest as, a, uh, as, a, um, uh, as an investor, right? You'd be able to invest in this Lao and then you vote depending on, on the amount of money you put in, you know, what, uh, which deals you like. And then the rest is sort of executes and the allocation of the money into that, for example, uh, uh, definition. So uh, the membership interest, for example, in this case, and this is a real world example that was just released uh, last month, uh, the month before the end of maybe June, 
uh, no, in the end of April. Uh, so the Lao could be purchased through public sales, of course, to stay compliant, it's only going to accredited investors, meaning that people have to have a million dollars in assets or make under $150,000 a year in combined to be able to count these regulations conduct an attorney uh, and a lawyer and when looking more into this that's near you for your for your jurisdiction but for the most part this at least gives you an idea of how this concept was taken of of the DAO and then saying okay let's use existing legal structures um, so we essentially you have an evolution of what the joint stock company was the first C corps and B corps etc and, uh, and 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 this is what that's of the um, of the law so that uh, those are a couple of the the real use cases that we have um, uh, with the DAO. Uh, I think that that would be re really relevant. If, for example, in this case, is for us to look at uh, sort of you can look at the GBA here and 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 how a GBA is working. If if, if, if this is okay uh, to share, Gerard, um, just to give people an idea. So the GBA electors, for example, is twenty one electors. I'm one of the twenty one electors. Uh, Gerard, as the founder of the GBA, has basically set up a group of the people that he trusts to sort of carry on the goals of the organization. <coughs> <coughs> and, and this is a governance working group. So essentially what we'll do in this early stage, where we're at right now, is we're going to enroll the GBA electors. So we're going to have these 21 electors. I'll get a Genesis token as one of the electors. And then we'll start giving proposals, right? So Anybody that's in the call today, for example, it's part of a GBA Miami uh, 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 chapter or anywhere else for that matter as one of the, as one of the board members of, of the chapter representatives. Um, uh, part of my goal is to just keep open ears and eyes for, for the suggestions overall of things that, that could be important, how we suggest proposals that are, that are, that are voted on. And then of course the voting of these, pro of these proposals and then creating, publishing, competing challenges for members to own tokens. So mo members of the actual GBA turn tokens. And as you know, right, we our, our goal as an organization is to bring both the government officials to the table to say, hey, these are the problems and the obstacles that we have. For example, in the city of Miami, yeah, we have an obstacle where right now there's a challenge on being able to identify how government officials and city officials and people can open up the public given the the, the hectic mix around COVID-19 and which and, and 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 we can create an open call of saying, okay, what are different contact tracing solutions that will allow us to open up parks and know that uh, with, a, with a degree of, of surety how we can go ahead and implement a solution. Uh, and in this case, that could be one example, right? And then we would, the, the city would vote or the residents would vote on what these things are. Uh, and, and, and the people that, that win the pitch competition get to earn tokens, right? So now you have a way for the organization to, uh, to, 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 and now again, this is a beta, okay? This is not necessarily, you should, you're going to, need to be careful on how you're doing this. Um, one of the things that's worth noting is when you have the tokens, do you, you know, do you sell the tokens in a secondary market at a cash value and things like this? And these are important things to take into consideration uh, because then they can talk about whether it's a security token, whether it's a utility token. And now we're, we're in a whole another level of conversation for the take of today's conversation. We want to keep it really simple, right? And just say, this is an example of maybe something that your organization can do. Uh, so, uh, here Could you explain the founder's Genesis token? Yeah, yeah. So the Genesis token um, is um, is really just the, the issuance of the first the, the the first tokens, the first of the twenty one tokens that are going to be awarded, right? So the electors, where to go? The electors are going to be given just one token, and that and and those are the first GBA DAO members. So the essentially it's the minting. Of the first, okay. So let's say we're thinking about a joint stock company, right? Let's take a quick step back. If you are an investor, okay, you could or you you could have preferred rate, for, so you can have a, a token that's that's just financial return, but then that's also separate from governance, right? And let's let's think, let's keep in mind that we're talking about governance today. The governance and the decision making capabilities of the board and the leadership, right? don't necessarily always measure up to the way that, that decisions are made based on economics of the deal. So in this case, eh, 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 we will be issuing this, this, this elector token, um, uh, the Genesis token, 
would be an elector token, very specific, very specifically focused on governance. Now, I have some other experts of our team um, from GBA here that uh, that can chime in as well to probably correct any of the craziness I might be saying. Hey, Sylvia, can can I just make a um, a, a point? Uh, first question: Is this session being recorded? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I need to make sure that it, it's very clear that what we're doing, when we, when we talk about the GBA uh, DAO, that what we're doing is, is something that is, um, that is in effect happening at the working group level, right? And that what we're essentially a, attempting to do is, is to define it, try out the tech, uh, put, up, put the processes together. We, you know, we, it's essentially uh, piling it at, at, the, um, at the working group level. And, and then and once we know that uh, the tech works, that the concepts work, the tokenomics works, the legal regulatory work, then we um, then we will bring it up to higher and higher levels. But uh, but officially, the GBA organization right um, has not uh, you know any statements that are made as part of this uh, session really are uh, at the working group level. Um, and 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 once we have this thing worked out, figured out, then we can officially make the proposal to um, uh, you know, up to the global level. But from, from legal, regulatory compliance, right, this, this is not, these are not, dis all, the, all the conversations and decisions that you hear being discussed are, um, um, are, are really happening as a, uh, as a function of a working group or a potentially a chapter activity, right? Uh, because we have not, we have not formally rev reviewed any of this stuff with attorneys and and gone through that that and the reason why we have it is because we're still figuring it out right so so these are uh, Silvio and a lot of very very smart people on the Dow working group have have put this concept together um, but it is not it is not the official position of the GBA it it essentially is the work of the of the working groups is that is that fair Silvio yeah yeah exactly this is all like this is all. And, and, and I would say we've been, as an organization, right, you have leading edge and you have bleeding edge. And this is certainly at that bleeding edge sort of thing. I mean, a lot of people, you're not going to hear a lot of people talking about maybe some of this stuff unless you're really deep into it. Um, uh, this is also very much, as, as George mentioning, experimental and indicative of sort of the direction of, of, of what others are doing, like ourselves as a nonprofit, maybe others as a for-profit, uh, and, and the different use cases that could be done. Right, and, and sort of what we envision the future to look like. Again, like you know, none of this stuff is fleshed out, right? Um, uh, uh, we're, we're early on in, in using it ourselves and rolling this out ourselves to then tinker with it and understand what's gonna work and maybe what doesn't work. Uh, and then also making sure that our compliance and, and things look at this. And so, so this is very, um, uh, it's, 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 it's very bleeding edge uh, technology. And, and a lot of the work and the fundamentals, okay, even when this does work, okay, even when we do figure it out, there's still going to be a lot of rules and regulations and legislations that need to catch up to the work that we're starting to do. Because how do you, for example, how do you regulate a manager that's a robot? when there is not one person that's responsible, but an entire organization and the entire organization is one manager and that manager, you know, makes a decision on behalf of the whole group. But let's say it's registered in an anonymous company that's making this group as a manager to a company that's in Delaware. Okay. And then Delaware, you know, has their own blockchain rules. And then the manager might be in Nevada or in Wyoming or in these places. And, and no one knows who's even a, a, a member of that. And so you basically have, either autonomously or, or not, you have a robot executing decisions as a manager at a company level. Rules and laws don't exist yet for this. The, the closest we've seen is Sophia, this robot, I don't know if you've seen her it, up, up in, it, that, that they got her residency somewhere in the, U, I think in the Middle East in Dubai or, 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 or something like this. Um, and because these are, these are rules and concepts that, that now transcend not even just the legal system, but even the whole philosophical com conversation of philosophy and power dynamics that are implied within the work that's, that's trying to be done uh, and accomplished with, with groups like this. I think we're very close. We have a lot of incredibly talented people that I think thus put, put us way ahead 
in terms of uh, how uh, in, in, in terms of being forward thinking in the applications. It's not perfect by any means, yet it is coming back. And I think that that uh, that there is a, that the evolution of the joint stock company is likely going to be looking at an iteration of one of the things that we've been looking at today. And I don't know if someone else has anything that they want to add, uh, uh, maybe to this point. Uh, Randy, thanks for joining. Uh, Sylvia, can I can I just add one thing to that? Because you made a really brilliant point about in some cases the laws don't exist. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why we're doing this is is to sort of press against the legal system and find where are those places where the legal system just doesn't work and and. Uh, towards that end, something I would love to do is I'd, I'd love to, to showcase this project uh, at the U.S. Capitol, right, at the Future Money Governance and the Law in, um, in March, uh, because, you know, uh, we're okay with sort of taking a, a risk, and if it, if it causes the legal and regulatory uh, systems to um, be presented with a low, a low threat, a low risk scenario, right, if we, if we did this with, you know, millions of people and and um, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions or billions of dollars of, of assets, right? Boy, that, that would be a big problem. But, but we are essentially, um, you know, the, the, hopefully this will be very helpful for both the legal and the regulatory environment because we essentially are, are a test case. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, and, and, and that's, an, that's an incredibly important point that, that, that how, you, how we choose to go about this is super key especially as a nonprofit organization, right? We're not playing with anybody's assets. We're not pitching orphans and widows to put money into this, to like go and allocate, you know, uh, uh, some of their funds. Um, uh, you know, uh, we are a nonprofit organization that is seeking to be more efficient, right? That is seeking to build institutional memory and that is seeking to figure out, to have a really rules-based autonomous system to, to grow and, and harness the, the, the power of the crowd and the knowledge of the crowd toward what it needs, uh, mainly by public, public and private individuals. So, uh, um, you know, I think that, you know, you, have, you need, you need uh, groups that are willing to take this kind of risk in order to, to, uh, to, to lay the foundation and the groundwork and provoke the thought and say, wow, this is among us now. This is real. It's working. It's functional. Right? Now, what, is, what are the implications of this? And what does it mean for our own respective communities and the people that we interact with and in terms of how we need to think about the next generation of the law? Uh, I would like to add something on the legal side. Uh, until now, most of the countries don't have laws even for cryptocurrencies, right? Most of the laws that have uh, the old uh, legacy laws that they're applying to the present digital assets. Uh, DAO will be, I guess, well, it takes some time to catch up. Um, yeah. There's some, it depends on what DAO, right? Some, uh, because I heard, I was reading, I was researching uh, DAOs and some, some hackers are setting up DAOs to coordinate attacks. Uh, so, so it all depends on if it touches the radar of, of the government. Now, regarding the, the GBA DAO, uh, I guess those who are, who are Curious. I guess the main thing purpose of DAO is uh, is coordinating for a common cause. Uh, so GBA DAO would help the I mean, members from around the world to coordinate and and basically vote to uh, for a common cause. So that's why we're excited for this this project. That's a very good point. Maud, uh, do you know, could you fact check me? Was that, was that robot? I know that Randy probably knows the answer to this. Um, the Sophia, the robot, where she was given citizen, citizen Saudi, Saudi Arabia, 2017. I put it in the chat. Oh, so cool. yeah. So we have now for the first time ever a, uh, a digital electronic um, entity. And, you know, the, the comment I put in the chat is, well, how do you tax, how do you tax an AI? Well, you got to give them citizenship so, so they can pay taxes. So that was the uh, kind of publicity stunt around that. And actually, just a couple of days ago, there was an interesting um, Sophia and um, oh, what's the motivational speaker of the really tall guy that's got really good energy? Um, 
Oh, wow. Tony Robbins? Yeah. Anthony Tony Robbins. Robbins. Exactly. So there was a Tony Robbins, uh, Sophia interaction for like 10 minutes. So it was, it was, Oh, I saw that. Yeah. It was pretty good. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do uh, can you, are you guys still seeing my screen here? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going through a couple of examples of other things that you might want to look at that are more for profit and open law has done some of this in terms of the structures and how, how they're involved. Right. So this is one, one project that's kind of noteworthy. Um, and the, they're, they're using this, this, you know, Ethereum, uh, protocol to work on. Uh, and the loud team is, 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 you know, this, this is the kind of Miami vice, a very Miami vice style, right? Uh, how they raise the money. So people just contributed the money. Right. And, um, and this is how it works is it gives you a breakdown um, and the baby DAO as they're calling it and how it works. Right. So investors will come in and then they'll, they'll, they'll be able to look at the multi-signature and figure out, okay, who's going to, who's going to win the money. How are they going to vote for it? And, and, and then those funds are put into what are called a special purpose vehicle SPV, which is sort of like another subsidiary company um, that's set up. Uh, just for this purpose. Uh, there's also something that, um, you know, and, and I don't want to bore you guys a little bit, uh, bore you guys too much here. Uh, so, you know, you can look at this. This is a real like functioning um, thing. So if you want, if you're a qualified investor, you can come in, right? And you can contribute, a, a, you know, the amount, I think you need to you know, put like 15, 20 K uh, in order to be one of the investors. So you can see that the contributors in this case are, are sort of like they're encrypted, right? If you're voting, right, and in and, and the case of maybe GBA, one of the limits of, 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 te of Telos is that it's not, uh, it's not encrypted, it's not anonymous voting, it's public voting, um, but you can see sort of how much is, is left so you can doubt. So if we, we actually wanna do blockchain and angel investing, right? So we might do a similar structure as a for-profit venture um, uh, that really starts to collect more capital, uh, for example, in, you know, in all this com the compliant way. And there's a Wyoming um, uh, laws that um, uh, that were passed that really relate a little bit to the to the DAO and uh, and how it is that that these Wyoming laws are passed. Block 512, particularly, uh, is what I would draw my attention to, right? And here you can see that these guys are starting to lay down the groundwork for corporate governance, right? And um, more specifically that your stock certificates or tokens and all these other things that are necessary for it to work. And particularly um, because you have to do a lot of like, maybe like blockchain to blockchain transactions. If you do it outside of a state, you need, uh, you need to be careful with what are, what's called the money transmitter licensing. Uh, so they have an exemption for money transmitter licensing in Wyoming. Something for us to think about even as an organization at GBA. Um, now uh, we, we ourselves as Logos Capital have registered a number of companies in Wyoming under this series called the series LLC structure. Okay. And this is what I would encourage you guys to look into. If you want to look a little bit more into what's happening is this HB 126. And this is a corporate code that allows the formation of the series um, to be able to have all these different types of security. So you can have uh, one, one limited liability company and then a number of other limited liability companies come under it. So for example, in the case of this, this infographic, uh, that we were looking at here, um, and you see that these guys basically will put the money into the wallet, and then that holding will then have to put a, a special purpose vehicle. Let's call it Project One or Project Two or Startup One or Startup Two, if you see what I mean. So the holding company then says, "Okay, we we accept. We're operating at this level. That's going to go and be siloed into a special purpose vehicle that goes into under that company, all within the tokenized environment." Um, if you guys want to trade notes, I mean, again, this is, this is all like geeking out, which is being nerdy about this is not to be legal advice at all. Talk to an attorney. Uh, but, um, but this is, uh, uh, this is, this is, this is already happening in real. So just wanted to show you, bring this to your attention. Um, so you can check it out. It, that, uh, that kind of covers most of the things that we needed to, to talk about in terms of the presentation. And uh, we have a couple of new people that have, that have joined the call. Uh, are there any open calls or questions or, things that, that, that you think should be mentioned or maybe from the team, something that I might have skipped or forgotten to mention? There was a DAO uh, rush week. Uh, I guess it was like 
last week it was there were a lot of good really good uh, DAO use cases presented uh, and, uh, yeah so I think you can look have a look at that uh, DAO rush week yeah DAO rush week okay Maud, could you uh, could you um, um, uh, see if you can set, put, post a link here in our group chat? Give me this. Let me just try it again. All right. Um, anyone else? Thouwrushweek.com. I found it. I'll go ahead and paste it to you guys here for those of you that are interested in learning more. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, so my name is again Silvio uh, with the Government Blockchain Association. If you guys want to learn more, I would encourage you guys to go to gbaglobal.org. That's gbaglobal.org. We have Alice. Hi, Alice. Uh, joined us. Alice, for example, is, uh, it works with the SBA. So she has a Thank you. email. Um, uh, so Alice, actually, you can go at to gbaglobal.org. You can register. And uh, anybody that has a .gov email, anyone that works with the government becomes a, a, a free member of the GBA. We have more than 50 plus working groups specialized in things. I know that you're in banking and trade, for example, or supply chain that you could apply this to, um, which could be very relevant to you. And the GBA is hosting a number of block, uh, of certifications in blockchain fundamentals, uh, um, we are not, we're doing blockchain fundamentals and we have a series of others that people that want to get deeper into that, uh, depending on, on, on if you want to be a consultant uh, or technical with, uh, with the work that you're involved or be a trainer of other trainers to be involved. Uh, we're also very involved. Uh, we're also doing that. Uh, we also have a couple of special tracks within blockchain and the certification program. If you want to do engineering, if you want to do legal, if you want to do medical, uh, where, you know, there is a specific blockchain track uh, for that. Uh, Gerard, I don't know if uh, is there something that maybe you'd like to, to talk about any upcoming courses. I uh, you know that uh, we're looking at doing one joint course, hopefully in the next couple of months here, that should give everyone this blockchain access. And Gerard has several going on as well. Yeah, if you go to gbaglobal.org and under events, just go to view all events, you will see that uh, uh, they're, they're in different languages. So I think... Uh, I think our chapter in Spain has um, uh, some of the courses in, in Spanish. We're in the process right now of reviewing the legal course for Australia uh, and New Zealand. Um, so our, our, our goals, we, we basically have two goals. One is we want to get 100,000 people through the training. And, um, and uh, the second goal is uh, we want to be able to support people in, in many different languages and uh, all over the place. Yeah, so if you just go to, to under events, go to view all events. Actually, yeah, I'd like to show them two things. View all events. So you can check this stuff out there. Uh, we do ask all of our chapter leaders to put um, uh, their events on there so you, you'll find all kinds of different topics. Um, the other thing, Silvio, is if you can go to the top of the cert the top of the page and go to certification, right? And then when it opens, scroll down on the right near right near the bottom, you'll see something about uh, for more information. Uh, it's a training information page or something. It's right below there. The link right below there. Yep. If you click on this, if you're interested in any specialized training, these are uh, training courses that are uh, delivered by GBA uh, training partners. And so there's all kinds. There's a there's development courses. There's cryptocurrency investigator course, all kinds of stuff. So if you if you click on that, fill out the form, then that lead will go to the training partner in that vicinity. And, and so they got you know, engineering courses and all sorts of different courses. We're hoping over the over this next year to be uh, to putting putting a lot of. Oops, what what page? What'd you click on? Financial professionals. Ah, we, uh, we made a change to that yesterday. All right, I got to go in and fix that. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go in there. I'll go in there. You can scroll, you can scroll down. The, the links all go to um, course descriptions down, down below it. So it explains what, uh, what it is. And then if you fill out any of the forms there where it says request more information, then your uh, contact information will go to the... Uh, 
to the trading partner. Yeah, so th th this is a great way to get information. All right, guys, I'm, I'm gonna have to sign off. All right, thank you, Gerard. All right, you guys have a great day. You too. You too, Gerard. Bye, guys. All right, so um, that, uh, that covers most of the stuff that we wanted to cover um, for today, yeah, but I want to take advantage that we have Randy um, uh, uh, on the line uh, to talk about a little bit of the smart city projects that we've been working on and, and that we're coming up on. Uh, Randy, maybe you um, can talk a little bit about what you're, uh, what you're doing and how we're laying down the foundation for a smart city here. Sure. Let me, uh, oh, there goes the privacy cover. Um, hi everybody. So yeah, we, we have, you know, been with, with, um, Silvio and Jean-Claude and the Miami group, uh, man, since what, 2017 end of there. So where, uh, we've been helping to grow uh, this wonderful community for many, many years. And we knew that eventually the fruits of our label would come to, to, um, fruition. And we have recently, um, arrived at that, that point in time. Um, so I've, I've joined a, uh, co-founded a new startup called Imrit, uh, which you can see the mirrored version here. Uh, but basically that.io is our website. And from there, what we're doing is uh, my company invests in the hardware infrastructure layer of networking for IOT uh, sensors. Um, so IOT? the internet of things. So, I put in here uh, the website that, or, or maybe you want to go to our website, Helio, uh, Silvio, or uh, pass me the screen share. Um, but with this, we're we're funded by a VC. So what we do is, we basically, uh, you know, we can buy a bunch of these hotspots. But the tricky part is, you know, not is having a lot of different locations to put the particular. Hotspot. We've all used Wi-Fi. Let's got the sound. Yeah. So what we've come up with is, okay, well, we'll invest in the hotspots and we'll partner with uh, different organizations, different individuals. And now you get a hands-on learning experience um, with uh, blockchain, with tokenomics, uh, with IOT, radio frequencies. There's a lot of different technological layers that are built into this. And it started in 2013 uh, from the guy that founded this, uh, Helium, is the same guy that gave us person-to-person, uh, peer-to-peer, P2P, file sharing, and Napster, right? So everybody remembers Napster. Uh, so that same guy created Helium, and he said, hey, why don't we create a from-the-ground uh, scratch blockchain as well as network infrastructure layer for the robots, for IoT, and the sensors that's uh, going to be in billions and trillions of demand coming up here in the next 10, 20 years. So they worked really hard on it and uh, finally got the software, got the hardware, everything in alignment. Um, and they launched um, last summer around August, September or so. Um, now there's about 4,000 of these hotspots around the whole uh, United States. Uh, we have about 13,000 hotspots that are going to be launched globally around the world. Uh, we're launching Europe and UK just got announced um, today publicly. Uh, we have a, a partner in, in Europe that we're going to be launching that network there. Uh, and then Asia at the beginning of next year uh, in January or so. And what we have right now is uh, you can see on this website in the top right corner, become a host. Uh, you just put in your shipping information and your installation address. You can have as many installation addresses as you want. It um, is, will take uh, about 300 meters is the minimum uh, distance that you need apart from each other. Um, and then, you know, some of these things can go miles or tens of miles uh, across for connectivity. One, one hotspot device can handle about 65,000 different sensors. And we're talking about low power, um, low 
data consumption. So the types of data that get sent is 24 to 255 bytes, not kilobytes, not megabytes, not gigabytes, but bytes. So it's really a long text message. And from there, it's basically, well, what sensors uh, would free up human time that can be offloaded to robot machine time and uh, not cost much power and not cost much uh, you know, data uh, connectivity. And that's where the helium network layer comes into place. So um, you know, a lot of our, our uh, initiatives are focused towards smart cities Right? How do we reduce the inefficient workload of the humans, um, such as something simple like uh, dumpster, dumpster trash can monitoring and scheduling. So instead of just every you know, Tuesday going on your normal route to hit all the trash cans, um, with a sensor inside, you can basically see when it's half full, three quarters full, and, and schedule accordingly. So some of the success stories there are you know, saving uh, tens of thousands of driven miles by giant trucks. So, you know, of course, also helps the, the uh, eco-friendly uh, <clears throat> reduction with uh, CO2 emissions, as well as a lot of costs in man hours, uh, you know, or human hours, um, as well as miles driven. Um, and one of the things that we recently posted in LinkedIn was a partnership collaboration with a sensor device manufacturer called Smart Mimic. And uh, with that, their focus is on the food processing industry and maintaining and uh, reminding, reinforcing social distancing uh, type of, uh, you know, protocol. And so on this little tiny device, you know, it's, half dollar size quarter size and you know it has alerts it has uh, sound alerts it has light alerts um, if you're you know approaching six feet or less than six feet and then it also has tracing anonymously right there's no names involved of the employees it's only the trackers and it's just hey this tracker was um, close to another tracker and this person was uh, tagged as having covid and you know who else did that person uh, who else did that person, you know, get in touch with heat map density, things of that nature. So that's what we're approaching a lot of the smart cities with. Uh, yep. Silvio's loading up the uh, map right now. We've got over 4,000 hotspots. Um, and so, you know, Wyatt just asked, uh, how do you get one in your city? Well, I'd put the emirate.io website and you go to that website and you fill in the information in the referral field, put GBA Miami or GBA MIA. Uh, and then that way we'll, we will um, send 5% of the um, earnings of all those hotspots that sign up uh, to GBA Miami. So, you know, they'll have more funds to be able to, uh, you know, produce better presentations and, you know, more um, type of uh, activities and promotions and events for, for the local Miami area. And uh, yes, you can trade your Helium tokens. Um, they're HNT. Uh, they're about 30 cents right now on the uh, coin market cap and a couple other exchanges. Uh, in a few weeks, it's going to be listed on a major exchange in the United States. Uh, we're expecting that you know the, the token, of course, will will go up in in price as it goes on. Um, so, with uh, this particular program that we run. Um, you know, we have a, as well, I'll drop a link here to, or not a link, but a file. Um, or, uh, let's see here. So we have a Discord. Okay, let me, let me put the Discord. That'll probably the, be the easiest thing to go to. So you can come to our Discord, and in there, um, we'll have a lot more information that I can share with everybody, but we have a particular... Um, we have different programs to help you get more more coverage in your area. And again, this is no cost to you uh, financially up front. It's more um, your time and finding new locations for hosts. And for that type of work, we, we do a revenue share with um, those people. Right now, the hotspots are about $425 each. That's the investment my company uh, believes is worthwhile to um, invest in and send and send um, those hotspots to you. So there's a lot of security that's going on 
Um, it's all end-to-end -end encrypted, pretty much just the user um, knows the information that's going on, or not pretty much, it is only the user that knows the information that's going on, and you can point it to you know, your AWS IoT cloud, or you can point it to you know, whatever server that you want. Um, so I just dropped in our Discord chat there, and you can ask more questions there. Uh, and yeah, we're looking for you know, business partners, to uh, spread the network as well as uh, to increase the adoption of um, the, the uh, usage of different sensors, right? And what does that mean ultimately? It means we're giving our human time away to the uh, robots so they can handle those things more efficiently for us. So our time can be freed up to handle more uh, other types of activities or work, ideally you know, cre creativity, right? Uh, once you get into kind of the artificial general intelligence type of conversations, but that's for another presentation. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, you know, working with Silvio, he'll, he'll have a lot of answers too. Um, and he's, he's uh, with some of his partners there in Miami is about to, you know, launch a uh, hundred plus hotspots and totally take over uh, South Florida, which is going to be very exciting. Um, you know, we got track and trace, uh, you know, never lose your pet again, never lose your kid, uh, God forbid, um, or your car, <laughs> or things of that nature, um, and many other applications as well. You know, there's hundreds of different sensor devices that can be connected uh, to this technology. So any agriculture, uh, you know, agri-tech, uh, sensors, pressure, temperature, um, like pretty much any kind of sensor that you can think of that's low data, and low power so it's not for you know video conferencing or things of that nature but um it's more for kind of smart home smart industry smart city type of initiatives all so, right good yeah. that's uh you know, you so the, fu the future is here guys and and, and randy uh, brought to you by randy lee and company um if you guys are interested you can dm me again you can also go to emrit.io you can put your information there, uh, put reference code GBAMIA, and, uh, and then, you know, off you'll go with a couple of the uh, 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 having your own node in the system and really owning a piece of your future in our city's future. Now, without further ado, guys, I'm Silvio. You can reach me on my email, which is silvio at logoscapital.io. That's L-O-G-O-S capital.io. And um, I am uh, I'm thrilled to be with you today. Thank you for your attention. If you don't have any other questions or comments for the moment, I, uh, I will bid you adieu and tell you thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Silvio. Thank you so much, Silvio. Appreciate it all. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. Thank you. And from Venture Cafe Miami, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Silvio. Appreciate the presentation and from all the other speakers. Um, we have some more uh, programming going on in Venture Cafe tonight and also every week. So check us out. There's a virtual toast happening just to end the evening, which is pretty fun. Um, but otherwise, 4 to 8 p.m. every Thursday, we're here and uh, look forward to welcoming you back. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Thanks. See ya. Melissa, where do we get, where do we get a hold of this video? Um, well, I think you started the recording. Yeah. So it will go oh. to your computer. All right. Duly noted. Good. Um, if it comes to my computer, I'll let you know. All right. We'll get it so much. Should be your, your computer or the cloud. One of those two. Yeah. Um, not yours, but whoever started the recording or whoever. Right. The host is. Okay. Okay. All okay. Right. Great. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>